Hi, it's Jess here from iJess.co.uk. Thank you for joining me today. Today it is the Project Share uh, blog hop, which is um, one of my favourite blog hops. Um, and it's it's me and Jill from Paper Daisy Crafting, uh, Heather from Stamp with Nelly, and uh, Verity from uh, Inky Butterfly. And uh, so we share projects of each other's every Thursday. And then on the first Saturday of the month, we have started doing a blog hop. The theme is black and white. So we might all be using this. I don't know. So I don't know what they're, they're making. But I thought this is my opportunity to get the True Love designer series paper out and get it used. I'm a bit of a paper hoarder and I tend to like look at it and stroke it and don't actually cut into it until like the last couple of weeks of the catalogue but um i'm uh i'm, I'm going for it i'm not actually going to cut it to be fair this is an origami project so it doesn't actually be cut so we've got these lovely florals and i thought these were these two particularly lovely to color in um, lots of people have seen color this one a bit easier. I like this one. I thought that could be coloured and it could look quite vintage. See, ideas are popping. Ideas are popping in my head, and that one as well. So, and then so these are the floral sides, which are quite beautiful. And then the other sides are um, just sort of like geometric, but that's well, that's sort of geometric, isn't it? Well, it's not really. It's sort of curved days. Um, but yeah, some of these make your eyes go funny. I think that one particularly makes my eyes go funny. I couldn't look at that for a long time. Dotty and Stripey are always very firm favourites with me. But this is the one I'm going to use today. Okay, so I'll just pop these back. And I'm going to make a little mini album. I've not done a mini album by using a 12 by 12 sheet for a very long time. Time. And I'm going to give a shout out to a junk journaler that I watch, uh, G from Happiness in Crafting. And she did this on her channel uh, a few weeks ago and I watched it and I had a go. So this is my prototype that I made with some retired uh, paper. So uh, it's an origami fold and you end up with your folding, you've got pockets there on the inside so I've used a little bit of um, memories and more just did a couple up so you could sort of see that you could use these as a little photo album got another one there we've got I've made that like a file folder and then you've got one one in the back here as well and then you've got two in the front so you've got six six of these cards and i decorated the front and then this is the same memories and more and i've done that just held it in there with washi so that you can put a photo or journal in or something behind there so i just put those in for just sort of ideas and i turned that into a pocket so you could put um a tag in there but you know it's up to your own sort of imagination what you want to do so G made these and and she made them in different sizes she tried 12 by 12 she did an 8 by 8 she did 9 by 9 and her idea was you put a gift card in it so the smaller ones you put a gift card um, but then she said you could make them for little inserts in albums or just make it as a little brag book so I've just stuck the ribbon there on the back and then she made one with a little journal in, which I loved. So this is this beautiful um, pressed flower paper, which I think is still on clearance. And so I turned it into a bit of a vintage journal. And I followed G's way of a little um, adjustment of folding that bit over, which is the way I'm going to make this. So you've got a little bit more, more room. Those should be opposite. So this is coffee dyed, um, it's a coffee dyed Miss White actually, might be tea dyed. Um, and so yeah, we've got the, we've got them like that, we've got the same file folders like that. So if you're into the vintage, this is quite nice. And then 
I've just put some coffee stained or tea stained um, booklet in, in, in the middle so you can turn it into a journal which I just think is gorgeous and then you've just got and I just rounded those corners put it on the inside so love that love that um, sentiment there I might be using that one again and then you just you just tie a little bow around and I just think it's a lovely little journal so you can add the signatures um, the little book pages if you want or you can leave it without it's entirely up to you I know lots of people do do sort of mindfulness and I just think this is a nice little journal maybe if you want to start journaling and a big journal is a bit too much this is a good one to start with because it's only we you could maybe wait make one for each month so you do a 2021 journal and um, make it your your monthly and you have 12 of them at the end of the month to sort of end of the year even to look back on anyway so what do we do now you can do it um by scoring you can do it uh, by folding i like to score um just because sometimes my, my folding's a bit a bit rubbish so um, this is non-directional. I think it's easy if you use non-directional non um, because some of it will be upside down. So I'm going to score at three, at six and at nine. So every three inches. So it's basically it's, it's three inches wide. Then we're going to fold. I'm going to use the butt end of that. To help me make sure that these are folded right because even with scoring you can do a little bit of an adjustment and just fold those in okay so the center meets it's not quite meeting but it's okay it is okay. So I'm going to take my bone folder and give those a burnish. I do like origami projects. I think they're clever and fun. Now I'm going to put my glasses on because I can't see this bit. So you're going to take this corner and you're going to put this edge here to that fold which is why i need my glasses so that i can actually see the fold there we go um, and just crease have my finger there my nails are too long but i'm really rubbish at shaping but they do really need going down. Third world problems and all that. There we go. And then this one goes down. I normally do on a Saturday. I've started doing a junk journal video. And so I thought this one kills two birds with one stone. It's a Stampin' Up! video. And it's a journal video. I mean, this isn't very vintage -y, but I've showed you how you can do it vintage. So... That's that, and then you fold those over to the inside, like so. And then we're just going to flip it over and we're going to fold that back so that that point is sort of at the bottom there. Okay, I've left a little bit of a gap like there and then we fold this one over as well and it's going to overlap slightly in there that's what we ultimately want to do so I'm just going to pull it back slightly and then
do that and then you've got your opening there so that's the way you fold it when i did it the first time i folded it that way and um and i was like well where's these pockets gone but this is where the pockets appear so you've got one each there one there one there and these here now what you can do is you can do a little bit of gluing at this stage and you can do a little bit of folding so i'm just going to open these back out and then on this back edge we want to just fold these in a bit i'm going to use my scoreboard to make it a bit easier so well, i'm going to do it this way around so that's on the nine there so i'm going to come down to eight and three quarters and just score down there pushed a bit too hard score down there at eight and three quarters so that this can fold over and you get a, a sort of a neater edge and you get a bit of a gap which is much better so do the same on that side down here at eight and three quarters so we're just going in a quarter of an inch there and it does give it a nice edge I've done the I've done it both ways and I quite like it and if it's a pocket and it's going to be going in and out and in and out you want it's a uh, quite nice that it's got a bit of a, a stronger edge so we'll just give those a bit of a burnish and I'm going to just do a bead of glue along it so it, it glues down there we go I'll just give that a minute to we don't need a minute, but a few seconds to properly dry, like so. And then on the other side, I say this is an optional step. You do not have to do this. I like it. I'll link to G's video. So you can go and check it out. She did do it in different sizes. So you can see what the different sizes look like. So. so you can see there that you've got, you can see the pockets a bit better and you've got a little stripe there and I just think it's, it's quite nice. Now, the other thing that is an optional extra, which I'm going to do, is do a little bit of gluing on, on here so that when that goes in, it's actually glued down. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue along here. And the other way about doing this, it doesn't really matter if you're not met in the middle because by doing that, you create a bit of a gap there. So that is helpful if you're not as accurate as you'd like to be then we'll just stick that in there stick that in there and then you don't get because sometimes it does bulge a little bit there in the middle and by doing this you don't get that that bulge okay so that is the basic basic album and then you just need to add our journaling cards and then decide whether or not you want to do some signatures so for the cards I'm using basic black so it's black and white I suppose you could use white I've chosen to go with basic black so you need two sheets of black cardstock and we are going to cuts cut 
cut it five and a half inches. And then we're going to cut that three and a quarter. this let's just do me in the middle ones the middle ones are two and three quarters oh yeah they do oh cooking on gas right so we need two that are five and a half by two and three quarters so we don't need full three sheets so i'm going to cut that to two and three quarters it is it is two and three quarters for the sake of Cut that five and a quarter instead of five and a half. What a wally! I'll cut it out the other one. It don't matter. I'll use it for something else. So we need one more like that, and one more like that. So I'll cut it this way. So I need. Go five and a half, and I've still got a card base on that side. Three and a quarter. Two and three quarters. So those are the ones that go in the middle, and these are the ones for the outside. Now to create my file folder um, tab, that I've got on the top here. What I did was I put this um, at the three inches. So there's a quarter of an inch over this side. And I ran my blade up to two inches. And I stopped at the two inch mark. And then I took my scissors and I just snipped corner there and snipped up to that mark there and that's what gave me my file folder edge to go in these pockets you can round the round the edges as well if you want to so Show you again i put that at three so it's over there by a quarter run this up to two inches and then i actually use the other one as my template for the notching so they are all the same Go and then I just use this one so that I could notch and notch, and the file folders are the same. So you could actually do this for lots of things. For making file folder tops. I used to use the envelope punch board because that's got a nice little punch but this works, this works and the thing about sort of making journals and junk journaling in it is just using what you've got not going out and buying lots of new things. Although don't tell Ed that because it'd be like Jez, you're always ordering things. You're always buying things. I was like, I oh, know. Right, so then I'm just going to get my corner rounder and round these corners. 
you could use a tab topper you don't if you don't want to do this as well so i'm just gonna give the corners a bit of a wipe and that helps if the corners are rounded it does help with the going in and out of um, the pocket so they go in there nicely and then the ones for the middle they work much better if they're rounded because they don't get caught on anything and they just slip in there and it still folds up that's why they're a little bit narrow so I'm going to finish off doing those Okay, so they're all done now, and uh, I just want to uh, decorate decorate the um, the front. So I decided I had a little look at my stamps, and I thought actually this one here made good things grow all year long. If you were going to use it for sort of um, memories of the year, or give it to somebody who you know might need a bit of mindfulness. I thought that was a, a nice um, little sentiment to you. So I've um, mounted that. I've got some Whisper White cardstock here. I haven't got my ink. What am I like? There it is. So I'm just going to going to stamp that there we go and I'm thinking I'm going to use my stitch so sweetly dies and I'm thinking that that will cut out with that one quite nicely and as I've used with this one I use this second largest rectangle there so I thought I'd do that and I would use this this lovely stamp here because I thought those daisies would go quite well with the flowers on here the sort of daisies on there that was that was my thoughts so I'm going to stamp this on obviously it's too big but I'm gonna cut it out and have this on the on the background And it worked, I mean, my junk journals was why I bought this set because I thought this stamp here would just look lovely on tags. So that is, yes, why I, why I bought this stamp set. And then I'm just gonna cut it out uh, like so, and then cut that one out and sort of lay it on top. And I think that would look lovely. So I'm just gonna get these die cut. So there, they're cut out and I cut a black shape as well because when I cut it and I put it on I thought oh it does look a little bit lost it needs something to help it pop I could ink around the edges but then I thought well let's just make another one and then we'll just could use scissors just slice it down the edge we've got those two points that's um that's helpful And uh, we can just offset that slightly so that it's got a bit of border around. I'm going to snip off those those points because I don't actually want to see them. So that will be enough to shadow the top and the bottom quite nicely and then it will pop on there so I think that will work and so I'm just going to glue those down 
and I'm going to create um, going to create a pocket and put a tag in there. So you could ink. Black inking around this would have worked. Seems strange to make it like a journal without any inking. But I do intend to do that. I do intend to make one with no inking. Just see what it's like. Oh, put my finger straight in the glue. And I'm just going to put my glasses on. I'm going to just snip those little harsher edges. Which I'm sure nobody would notice, but I would every time I looked at it, and I'd be like, "Why don't I just snip them?" So that's that. So I'm gonna glue down three sides of this. So we've got an extra little pocket. So if you're giving this to someone, you could put a little message on the little tag. So you could ink around the edges of this as well, if you wanted to. You could pop these up on dimensionals, but I do try to not have the, the front of a journal with too much that could possibly knock off. Because if this is going to be some sort of journal that gets, it could be a brag book, people could put photos in it, um, that they carry around in the handbag, you don't actually want bits that have been popped up on dimensionals because they're easy to, to tear off or get caught or get spoiled. So... On there. I've just managed to get a bit of glue on there. It'll come off when it's dry with my with my glue eraser. And then I just got a little bit of the off cut and I've just cut this down to two inches by four and a quarter. I kind of measured there where it would come up. I might trim a bit more off. We'll see. I'm going to use my Fancy Tag Topper Punch, delightful Tag Topper Punch it's actually called, which is just a delightful name. And then I just thought the shape of that kind of went well with the shape of that. Let's get the corners rounded so that it will go in easier. And you could add, add some white cardstock to this so that they've got something to to write on and that should just fit down there it's actually quite a tight squeeze so I might just trim a little bit off the sides so that it goes in better so I'm going to line up to where that, that edge is there I mean this um, actual punch does have different measures you are it is sort of designed do that. Every tad more. There we go. Still a nice end. 
it around those corners again there. And so you could add some more DSP to this or you could add just, just a rectangle of white. But I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. So we've got a nice little bit of that sticking out. I'm going to chop it down again. Do you know, I'm not satisfied. I do want a little bit of it. <sighs> There we go. I'm going gonna, gonna to go down to four, four inches. I think will work. It's really important with this one as you've got proper rectangles, re rectangles, right angles. There, yeah, perfect. Look, see, that was worth faffing with, wasn't it? To get it where you wanted. And then we just need a bit of ribbon. So I've run out of, I've not got me, I've got white seam binding, but I haven't got enough to go around this. We had a lovely black satin ribbon uh, a few years ago, which would be lovely, don't have it. Um, but I've got the white with the metallic edge and that sort of add a little bit of bling which should be quite nice. So, I think that'll be enough. Tie a bow, let's have a go. <laughs> Tie a bow, have a go. So, pull your knot at 90 degrees where you want your bow to sit. That's my tip. And there we are. So that is fab. There we go. Nice little bit of bling. You could then add a little bit of um, the odd little rhinestone if you wanted to. Which I might do. I think that would add something to it. Right on my rhinestones, Put every colour, there we go, Put the ones I wanted, so I might just bring out the bling in that, put a couple of these down there. Like a bit of bling. Tina from Stabby Dabby Doodah. She likes a bit of bling, doesn't she? So there we go. And then that could be it if that is what you wanted and you didn't want any sort of journaling. But I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how to add some journaling. So I've got here some white copy of paper, but it's thicker than normal. It's um Oh, hang about. It's telling me my battery's running out, but I'm still all right to carry on. Sorry about that. So this is uh, 120 GSM. So just a bit thicker for journaling in so you could actually write on both sides. So I did, I think, I did five and a half inch square. So... Chop this down to five and a half. That way, five and a half. That way, and then fold in half. Use the bone fold to give it a nice crease. And that is a page that will fit. Oh, I've got to glue that. What about that? That is, yeah, perfect size for fitting in there. So I'll show you how I glued the ribbon down as well to keep it in place. So five and a half, five and a half. And I just did four sheets.
so I will cut two more. So that's my my four sheets. There, done. You just put them in together, and what you'll find is you get a little bit where they're not quite neat. So front because obviously with the thickness of the paper it sort of protrudes a bit so if you're not bothered happy days leave it like that if you want it to be straight then i just go in and i just trim so i am asking this to do quite a lot because they are 120 gsm so now we've started, we can do halfy-halfy. Turn it round, try and keep it straight. is now straight along there ish so that's in there I also um, rounded the corners no I didn't but you can so you could round the corners if you wanted to so then I just sewed that in place and um, I know some people are like, oh, sewing, it's actually really easy. So I'm going to show you how I sew it. Okay, for sewing, you need a needle with a big eye and you need something to sew it in. I'm just using the Stampin' Up! white baker's twine because I think that will work nicely with the colour here. Um, you need some sort of clips. You could use paper clips, bulldog clips, larger clips, whatever. An owl, I know lots of uh, junk journalists will have owls, um, but if you're a paper crafter, you'll have a, paper, a pokey tool and they all work. OK, so what you really need, to, what you need to do is we want three holes. So we want a little template. So we want to cut a piece. Um, we we'll use some of the the off cut. So we want the same length. Um, as we've got there, which is five and a half inches. If we just, I'll just cut it down to two for ease. And what I do is I have lots of templates. Oh, it's telling me I'm running out of battery again. I'm gonna keep an eye on that. And um, this is the third video today I have um, filmed. So we find the centre just by folding it in half and then we fold it in half that way. So then we've got our point in the middle. So that's going to be our middle hole and then we want holes either side. And what I do is I fold it in half again and then this top half I fold in half again. And then it's at that point that I, um, do you know, I just want a pen with a lid off. I oh, haven't got one. Yeah, I've got a pencil. That's even better. So it's at that point that I'm going to put my hole. I'm going to put my hole there. And then I do the same on that side. And so this is, I'm going to do what they call a three hole pamphlet stitch and uh, it is uh, the only one I've done to be fair there is um, you could do a five hole but I've not done that you need that you need those for sort of bigger ones so what you do is you push it in to the fold 
and then you want to hold it in place. So I just put a bulldog clip up there where it's a Bible clip and I'm going to put one on this side down here because we want to put this hole all the way through and coming out the back. I'm going to take these out. Couldn't get it out because it was clipped like an empty. It would just makes it easier for seeing coming out the back if we take these file folders out because otherwise we can't see the spine. There we go. So that's sort of held nice and securely and then what you do is you stick your pokey tool or an awl in there and you just fold the book slightly and then that way you're going to get it coming out of the crease like that. So that's come out perfectly on the crease. Okay, if you do it so you open it up and stab down, you're less likely to hit it on the crease. And then we do the same at that hole. So there we go on the crease and then at the top end. There we go. I got this all for Christmas. I got a book binding kit. And until then, I always used um, the pokey tool. So that works really well as well. And then you take your thread, whatever it is that you're going to um, sew them in with. And three times is sort of rule of thumb. Three times the length of your book spine. And I should be able to thread this without my glasses. There we are. So that's thread like that. What you've got to remember to do is take your template out, but leave that hold in place. Ooh. What am I doing? So If you want your threads and ties in the middle, you start in the middle out. If you want them on the outside, you start on the outside in. So I'm going to have them on the inside. So you just go through that hole. You want to be careful you're not making a new hole. You're going through the hole that you have made. Have that down the bottom and hold it tight. You could put it under the bulldog clip to hold if you want to. I'm just going to hold it and then you go in through the top there in that hole making sure you're not making a new hole you're going through the hole that has already been made okay and then you're going to go back out through this middle one you want to make sure that you're not splitting the thread and that you're coming out through that hole there like so and then you're going to come back up this one that's your three stitches give everything a good pull put your needle underneath that thread there and then tie a knot. You can at this stage check that's tight, that's tight and tie a knot. Double knot. And that will be nice and secure. You can tie a bow Or leave it like leave it dangling some people put charms on it so I'm just gonna slip this off I might add a charm I've got some daisy charms actually which would go nice with the daisy that were that were out a few years ago now you could do a little bit of stamping on these pages if you wanted to um, I'm probably just gonna leave them plain but you could 
sort of go through and stamp some images on there. Um, I want to put a bit of um, ribbon on this actually to finish that off. So I'm going to take my, my ribbon here and then we still need to um, so not so stick it around the back. So a little bit of a long one, I fear, but I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, I say, if you're a paper crafter that's never tried junk journaling, do check out my um, my playlists. I have uh, playlists for my junk journals. And uh, if you're watching this because you discovered me through junk journaling, yeah, I do do is other sort of paper crafting as well. So, stick that in there. You might find with your folding and everything that you might need to adjust slightly the size of these tags. I've done them five and a half inches. I might have just took a smidge off, might be slightly better. Okay, and then we're just going to, I've got, I've got a slight bit of organisation. I've got a place where I put all my... Um, Where's my ribbon gone? All my um, book binding stuff. So, right, so that's going to go across there to be tied up. So, we're going to stick it about there. So, I'm going to stick it slightly below the centre because I kind of want to see the. Um, um, The words I put on the front. So I'm going to take a bit of tear and tape here to go across. Put too much on. That's sticking to my fingers. There we go. And that's all I'm doing to secure it in place. There we go. Find the centre. Put that down there. Now I can't see it. There it is. That's grand. Around the front. So there we have it. Nice bit of journaling. I'll add a little charm. And that is our little black and white journal for the challenge. Well, it's not a challenge, the theme, the theme of our blog hop. So it'd be great to see what Heather, Verity and Jill have made. So the blog post that's linked down below takes you to my blog with all these details on and then there'll be a next button to go and see one of the others. I don't know who I'm linking to at this stage because we haven't put the links on. I might be first. That'd be ace. So there we have it. So hope you liked that. Hope you give it a go. Do show me. I have a Facebook group, Nigeria Creates Crafty Place, and I have a Facebook group with Jill, and that's Jill and Jez. Um, come crafting with Jill and Jez because we do a Jill and Jez go crafting blog um, feature. Um, and yeah, go check us out. Or any sort of crafting is welcome. So I hope you like that. So that's black and white. That's a bit vintage. And uh, that one's a little bit festive. So yeah, I'll, um, I'll link to G's um, video as well. And you can see what they're like in, in different sizes. So they could be nice little inserts into a journal. Um, or they could be a little handy journal all on its own. Okay, bye for now.